Hey gang, welcome back to Inverted Pursuits Laboratory and the video series It's All Up From Here, Getting Started in High Power Rocketry. So this week we're jumping into level one rocket design. So the basic things you need if you're going to go the scratch built route to get your rocket off the ground. So up here at the top I have a list of all the parts you need to get started and just some pictures of what things look like. The image below of a full rocket, this is usually what a level two looks like if you just remove the electronics bay, the drogue chute, and mash the two body sections back together that's the basics of a level one you won't have any electronics on your rocket you can but i don't recommend it it's easier just to go and let the motor uh, charge blow your parachute out and do it all based off the standard timing of the motor so the base parts you need as you go in are your nose cone at the very top here your body tube that will be the main structure the fins for stability your motor mount tube where the motor uh, will reside. Motor retention method, oftentimes this can be done with a simple screw and a piece of steel. A shock cord, these are often nylon as you can see here attached to the tube in between the centering rings. A parachute which will get packed inside. Centering rings which are these black things I have here on uh, the motor tube where the shock cords attached and rail guides rail guides are super important and often one of the most overlooked things I recommend using rail buttons from railbuttons.com great place to get uh, effective and efficient launch supplies so as you're going into the design of your rocket the big thing you've got to uh, worry about is is your rocket stable and these are very easy things to adjust by changing the length of your rocket, the diameter, and your fins. So the factors though that affect this are your CG, your CP, and your airframe diameter, your main factors in your uh, static margin that determines stability. So to be a stable aircraft, you actually have to have your center of gravity in front of your center of pressure. The center of gravity's average ro location of weight and your center of pressure is your uh, location of net aerodynamic forces. And those net aerodynamic forces are heavily uh, factored in by the fins and the nose cone. That's why it's so close to the fins and uh, on the CP. If it's further forward, it's unstable. This graphic here really nicely shows what unstable versus stable looks like. Your CG always needs to be closer to the nose than your CP and open rocket will spit out a nice little uh, static margin ratio for you or they'll call it margins uh, and usually you want it to sit between 1.5 and 1.9 any lower than 1.5 and you're flirting with being unstable below one you're just plain out unstable and over two you're just so stable that every gust of wind will just push you around um, so you would need to sit right in that range and there's no need to like know this calculation here where static margin is CP minus CG divided by um, the outside diameter of your airframe, but it is a handy thing to have around if you ever need to just quickly do it on the fly. CG and CP can be rapidly calculated even if you don't have the software. CG is just as simple as load your rocket up and balance it on an object to find the CG location and CP is actually uh, simply found if you take a 2D cutout similar to what you see here of the rocket this 2d cutout um, and you do a flat 2d cutout of your rocket and what it looks like the location of the center of pressure will actually be the location of the cg for that flat sheet component it's a nice little hack to find your cp in the field although it can be hard with high power rocketry to find a large enough piece of cardboard or wood to do that with so it's better to just know where your CP is and have it marked on your rocket before you get out to the field. Oftentimes they want to know where that is. So then recovery. Recovery is a very important part of this. You're usually going to be using a single flat panel parachute. And in the next video I'll show you guys where to source a lot of these parts and what things I would use if I were going through this. Um, you're always going to be ejecting via black powder charge on the motor, and this is a standard part that comes in a motor, especially if you're using a DMS motor, which we'll get to here soon, but that's what I recommend. And the shock cord is one of your most important factors. It connects the body tube to the nose cone and to the parachute. And so it will be glued into the uh, body tube via the motor retention and centering rings that you saw on the first slide. 
and will be connected to the nose cone via quick link connect and to the parachute via quick link connect so the parachute doesn't actually connect to the nose cone it attaches somewhere near the nose cone on the shot cord um, and pay attention to where your rocket lands especially because you know, your rocket drifts you may not be allowed to go get it when it's out in the field it may be down range and you've got to wait until they clear the range and say you can go get it but make sure you're following your rocket when you're coming in uh, after you launch all right now on to level one motor selection i recommend going with a 38 millimeter motor it makes hitting your hri motor class requirement very easy uh, smaller diameter or smaller diameter motors can be harder to hit that Aerotech offers an RMS or DMS solution. RMS requires the use of the motor casing you can see on the upper right picture. Um, it's a little more pricey and is something that a lot of people don't want to invest in just because you are often only fly your level 1 once and then you move on to a level 2 and you get into bigger rockets. Which is why Aerotech also offers a DMS system which is just the same as an Estes motor, just bigger. So it's a complete disposable system, you just put it in your rocket and fly it. The recommendations I have for you here on motors, if you're flying RMS end, I recommend an H242T-14A, and if you're flying a DMS, I would recommend an H100W-14A. They have very similar impulses, and they're just both very trustworthy motors. Thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing and stay tuned for the next video. In the next video, we're going to go over rocket components and where I would buy everything if I were to be building a level 1 myself. And hopefully one day here in the future I can find time to go and film some of my friends that I know are working on their level 1 to get you guys some footage of what it looks like when you're building a scratch built level 1. Thanks for watching gang.